Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside Brewery Interviews. Uh, we are back at the brewery yet again, uh, thankfully, but as you can see, we are socially distancing. Today, we are socially distancing from with Martin and Fred from Bois Blanc Brewery. Hello. Hi. I'm Martin. I'm Fred. Thanks for letting us interview you guys today. I really appreciate it. Uh, very, very thankful. A little, we were a little late, honestly, because uh, there's traffic in Montreal, and you guys are a little outside of Montreal. But Great, great excuse. Yeah. That's, that's my excuse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's the beer story? What brought you guys together to create the Bois Blanc brand? That's a great first question. Um, it's a pretty easy answer. It was true love. You know, you know when you go to th in that movie and you see like that, that light shining? Well, that was what happened with us. <laughs> we kind of had a, a nerd uh, board game night. And I kinda, we kind of got introduced through uh, a friend. And as soon as I walked in, the light was shining down from the heavens onto <laughs> Fred as I walked in. And uh, he later... Uh, admitted it was the same for him. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it almost brings tears. It was beautiful. <laughs> it, it, I think it did actually. <laughs> That's fantastic, and just mutual love of board games and beers from the sound of it. We just just clicked as people. Yeah, that, uh, the right way to say it. That's awesome to hear. And uh, you brought me out some delicious beers to try. Uh, what am I starting with here? You're going to start on your left okay. with one of our new. Limited edition, never to be brewed again <laughs> beers called Fait Accompli. It's a New England into pale lager. Uh, we lagered it for six weeks. Um, so it's super smooth, super juicy, not overwhelming, just kind of right. And uh, I will uh, I will cheers yeah, you we're, and we're join you on this. Distance this. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> Very tasty. Barely any bitterness for my palate. It's just that right level, no hot burn whatsoever for a New England style. So. Sometimes less is more as far mm -hmm. as hops go. This is fantastic. Goes yeah. down super smooth. Uh, five, 5.5%. You got it, exactly. You may have looked at the can, but we'll just say that it was all your genius. No, but you can even, like typical lager, you're not going anywhere past six, right? Yeah. So, And lager is, to my understanding, a very difficult style to nail. So, It's... Yes. Well, you, you just have to do it properly, you know. Just, yeah. You have oh. to be patient. Yeah, this is a fantastic beer. And I saw it was part of the uh, distribution buck uh, pack. Yes, the new uh, case découverte de distribution buck. Um, your trend, your uh, pronunciation was on point, by yeah. the way. It was really well done. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you're welcome. He's good. Eh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's my partner. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so there's a, I think there's 12 beers in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Fat Compies in there. Um, and we have another limited edition beer too that's coming down the lineup, so we'll have that uh, later. But yeah, it's in there, and it's in specialized stores, and in some uh, some local grocery stores as well. Probably your IGAs, because I know IGAs are really good for the craft yes. beer in Quebec. Yep. So we, I was we, very impressed. Uh, the IGA I live not far from. It's like, oh, they're renovating the beer section. I'm like, oh, that sucks. And all of a sudden, it's like big new fridge, and it's all craft beer. I'm like, Okay. Uh, I guess I could go two weeks yeah. without buying beer yeah. <laughs> to get all the good craft beer. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so what were some roadblocks and difficulties you guys ran into, first of all, creating the brand? I know you used to have a, a brew pub. So uh, it was more uh, when we were like, you know, just at the, the end of like the first phase, if you want, per se. <laughs> uh, so we wanted to move, like grow. So that was a big a of a rough batch to find the right place. Uh, we've been like through. Uh, that was tough. Of, uh, Audrey, it was a roller coaster. Audrey was you know? tough. Uh, we were trying to. We had sealed the deal at a really nice building right look, overlooking the water on uh, Saint Charles in Vaudreuil, and we had a whole concept. Um, so we were going to get rid of the floor on one side of the building, there put was a whole a, brew house downstairs in the basement, going up to the top, tap room on the other side, cool. and the visits would actually start with, with a, a slide. slide. <laughs> and we were going to get. The yeah, we were going to get. Um, I like this kind of cool, like like a twist rinse, like for cans, but okay. for your beer glass, you go down the slide and you put your glass in this little contraption, and through uh, through physics, your your glass would not spill and you get your glass at the bottom. Very cool. Um, but sadly, the uh, the people of Vaudreuil voted against our project. They were scared. Yeah, um, the city was amazing, and honestly, most of the support was positive. But um, it was just like when you're actionable against something mm -hmm. people are a little bit more motivated when they're yeah. quite upset uh bois blanc where'd you come up with that why uh, in a sense in english white wood um actually it's uh basswood basswood okay 
so Bois Blanc is the common name for uh, basswood, and in French, it's tilleul d'Amérique. Uh, I used to be a woodworker. Okay. So it was a bit of, of like, I don't know, the, the passion I had for wood, not in a <laughs> wrong sense. But I'm French, you know, so I, sometimes yeah, I everything mix. can pass for you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and uh, we, we, we didn't want to get stuck with a name uh, that all the, you know, after all the names of the beer would like too match. Too yeah, yeah, too restrained. So, so yeah. And we like the triple B. Yeah. And the logo came after that. Well, I see you have it tattooed on your arm over there. Yes, so we do. It's that's part of our. It's right somewhere there. else too. Yeah. But yeah, we don't. We never show yeah, that we one. We can't show the other one. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah. So this is like a brewing paddle, yep. and at the same time, it's like a barley. Mm-hmm. You know. So uh, yeah, we did like the the BBB a lot, and we have different matching tattoos <laughs> for uh, our specific roles in the brewery. It's, uh, yeah. That's true commitment right there. Uh, it is, it, it is. You know, they say you should never tattoo a girlfriend's name, a band, or a sports team on your body. <laughs> you, you guys are like, this is our brand, this is this is us, this is permanent. We're so. branded, yeah. Uh, it's p- going to be part of our life forever, regardless. regardless. Like, yeah. we changed our life for this. We put every single penny we had into this. We both quit our jobs. We went full. So regardless of whatever happens in the future, this is always going to be a part and uh, one of the best parts. So Very cool. Awesome. Uh, what's beer number two I'm trying here it's today? It's 42 and two. So this is a California common ale. Um, we changed the name to Ale Californian en Brie, en français. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, so malty, caramel. You might have a little hint to taste of some hazelnut, light smoky yeah. finish to it. Uh, it's our take on the style. Get obviously. a lot of caramel on yeah. those. But this was the first Ooh. beer we brewed in Hudson, actually. Yep. One this, of is, the this is pretty delicious. OG. Hmm. Carp, you know, flattery is going to get you everywhere, right? So watch super, out. Super crushable, too. I could see myself drinking a bunch of pints like this. It, this is almost the weather for it right now, where we're kind of almost flipping into fall. This would be a good, you know, I'd have my pumpkin ales, but I'd also have some English bitters and some California commons at the same time. So. Ooh. We uh, we like the the kind of classic styles. We're really inspired uh, from England and Germany. We visited there uh, both places in the last couple of years uh, a few times, and uh, all our beers are made with heritage malt. So it's uh, the ancient ancient grandfather. Maybe you know all the story <laughs> about heritage malt, but we're trying to educate. Yeah, Quebec. Nope. Um, Please let my not, viewers know. Okay, so heritage malt. Listen up. Very important. <laughs> um, it's basically just, it's a barley that's grown. Uh, for its beer properties. Um, so it's not, first of all, it's non-GMO, it's made in England. So it gives a bit more round, uh, complex, you know, finish to the beer. Uh, and it also like balance a lot with, because we like hops. Okay. We put a lot of hops mm-hmm. in our beers. So it, it kind of balance everything. So the only thing, well, I don't think it's a, a bad thing, but it's uh, dangerous because the high ABV beers, you will drink them as fast as yeah. a low one, and good or bad things are gonna yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna drink it today, but like the Kraken is a yeah. good example of this. Uh, we uh, we'll do like a monthly beer tasting, and I'll be like, "Yeah, this is a ten percent," and my friend's like, "What are you talking about? This tastes like a four percent beer." I'm like, "No, dude, it's ten percent. We're in trouble tonight." Yeah. So uh, I always love that where it really cuts into the booziness because. If you just get booziness, then you might as well just drink a malt liquor beer. You yeah. don't drink a cold 45 or yeah. something. But no, I want and something with flavor where I'm not getting or I'm not like, unless yeah. I'm drinking some sort of super sour over the top where I'm expecting the lip puckering. But yeah, yeah. I don't exp- I don't want that in my beers. So. And we don't uh, we don't. Well, at least here, we don't cut any corners either. There's no dextrose. It's just a lot, a lot of heritage malt going into our beer. Too, too much, to be honest. <laughs> uh, more than we, it's not a, it's not a fun day. And I mean, you can't see Fred's forearms from here, but there's, there's a reason. So, uh, he's still paddling himself. We have a really, uh, completely uh, manual, manual system. system. Yeah. You can't press a button yeah. and make beer. Uh, it's, yeah. if you have to take a brewer that brewed 60 years ago, you can come here and brew beer. Very cool. Uh, you're spent grain. I'm assuming local farmer. You got it. Yeah. Yep. They they compost okay. we, we give and uh, that's the barley that uh, that's from the farm that we go uh, yeah so with the spent grain so it's a full circle yeah that's fantastic too and and local from the sound yep. so that's yeah. uh, the names and labels where'd you guys come up with that stuff 
it's gonna we're gonna be here a while. Guys. <laughs> yeah, well, the 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 general idea is that we're nerds, okay. geeks. So there's a bunch of uh, Easter eggs on each cans, uh, and they're all different stories. So I don't know if, for example, like the forty two and two. Well, this is a good one, forty two and two. Yeah, it's a real good one. So. Maybe you go with that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that's a, there's a lot. Okay, there. so it's two things. The name comes from two things. Uh, one of our favorite all-time songs is 46 and 2 from, from Tool. Mm -hmm. So that's where the and 2 comes from. I don't know if you're aware, but 42 is the answer to everything. Yeah. Um, so that's, Guys and Galaxy. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, we have Marvin. Marvin yeah. on the side. And uh, there's some other little Easter eggs. I mean, uh, the, little, the music is a drum beat that Fred wrote. <laughs> We couldn't put the actual 46 and 2 drum beat because I think we'd be uh, fined or something. Yeah, yeah, you got to watch out for that copyright material stuff. So, so uh, but yeah, we uh, we wrote a Fred wrote a little drum beat that is quite similar to a Tool song, not exactly the same. <laughs> um, but and we have like Enigma, which is uh, we actually can't talk about Enigma because no one has ever solved oh. the code on the, yeah, on the front of it yeah. on the top and the bottom. Yeah, so we're just gonna leave that as a complete Enigma. See what so, I did there? That's, uh, <laughs> sounds like an opportunity for my viewers to try and solve uh, solve the enigma. I, enigma. I would like that. They're going to get something quite special because it's been there <laughs> since the beginning, and uh, I never even gotten a submission yet. Huh. But we never actually advertise it as a kind of kind of thing. So very yeah. cool. Well, your, now your people viewers, know. Yeah, so. yeah, your viewers are going to get a, a, a heads up on that. Yeah, definitely um, cool. Roche Marin, which is our we call it a noob IPA. Um, we're going to make you try this. Okay. So it's a phonetic translation from French to English. So just the sounds. Okay. So phonetically, like just by, via the sound. So Rosh Marin. Getting close. Keep going. Ro Ro no, Roche. I mean, because the thing is like being in Quebec, I just kind of naturally want to translate <laughs> it. So even though I'm super English, when I think about it, I still did French for decades okay. upon decades. So well, the second one's easy. Marine. Marine, yeah. Okay. So Rush. rush marine. Rush. If you invert so. that, that's Marine Rush, which okay. is a noob strategy at StarCraft 2. <laughs> and the build orders on the side of the can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm not I, I never got into to that game. So Fred is I'm Fred is quite a, good. I used to be <laughs> before I started the yeah. brewery. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first beer you guys ever brewed yourselves? Uh, uh, it was Enigma, I it think. It was Enigma. Yeah. And it was a, uh, we boiled it twice oh, too long. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it I came out as that. a 13%. Ooh, ooh, oh, ooh. yeah. And it was pretty good, I gotta <laughs> say. <laughs> 13%. That's uh, that's a kick in the butt. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, we got like, we were supposed to get 30 liters, we got 10. <laughs> and uh, it was still good. <laughs> it was good, it was good. It was, uh, yeah. I say we go to the next one. I'm sorry. To, yeah, no, uh, no problem. To take over. I was actually going to ask what you brought next, so you beat me to the punch. So this is Monolith. Monolith. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a collaboration with Epitaph, okay. uh, who is uh, Jean-Philippe Barbeau. Uh, so he works at RG. He's the brewer, and he's heading up. He's got a new job. He's heading up their uh, experimental tap room. Okay. Um, which I think is a super cool project for him. So... Uh, yeah, he's brewing on a 600 liter brew house, Very and he's cool. doing anything I want, anything he wants, not I want. <laughs> anything I want. Anything I want. <laughs> Maybe at some. Point. I'm gonna get him to watch this, and there we go. It's on camera. It's got to be true, right? It's got to be true. And then, and then he has to do the interview with yeah. us after too. Yeah, so. that's no problem. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is a saison IPA. So you have the little taste of saison. It's not too much, but still kind of that New England style. Uh, this was dry hopped with uh, Hallertau Blanc. And uh, I think it's pretty god darn delicious. No, also, nose is very nice. That's uh, that's that beautiful nose I like uh, to have on a beer. Yeah, and yeah, it's just not just balanced and yummy. And yeah, mm. even if you don't like saison, you're still gonna like this if you like an IPA. Like this, the saison side of the beer um, is not overwhelming. Yeah, no, not at all. That's I was just about to say that it's, it's like more in the it's, finish, it's really, bit, you know, really right there. Settle. No overing bitterness either on, on the palate. I get, I get like maybe a little bit on, on one side of the back of my tongue, but it's very, very clean. This is what, four or five percent? -ish? That one is six. six. Wow. Surprising. It's a very smooth beer. So those were our two, two new releases mm. uh, for this, uh, for August. 
and um, we don't really like putting um, test batches out there. So generally, what we released has been has been prepared and vetted. Um, so yeah, we're going to bring out some, some more new beers yeah. from BBB, but we've already got uh, twelve solid recipes on the way. So it's uh, there'll be some quality new stuff coming out. Plus, you've expanded obviously beyond the original brew house. I mean, yep. you, you got a lot of room to go. You got a lot of room to grow as well. So a little bit it's better than Hudson, yeah. yes. So that led me in perfectly to the next question. Uh, some collabs you've done and some collabs you'd like to do. We did one with uh, uh, two, a year and a half ago, something like that, with Bua. Okay. Yeah, that was yummy. It was really good. It was uh, uh, a new Belgian IPA. New Belgian IPA. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so we brewed with uh, Marc Belanger, which is... Uh, the tallest brewer in... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funnier in French. Le plus grand. Le plus grand, yeah. yeah. C'est comme, it's more epic. Yeah. Le plus grand brasseur. Uh, yeah, so we had a good time. We brewed the first uh, batch at his place, and then we came to our place to brew uh, the batch. But uh, So, yeah, the guy is pretty tall. So okay. the, you remember ceilings at the place. So yeah, he was almost walking like that. You know? <laughs> it's like a basement apartment. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we did uh, the Ipita mm-hmm. one. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, we did some collabs with uh, stores. We did a collab with Espace Uno. Okay, yep. And uh, where there's a collab coming out this month with actually Discussion Bucket. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and uh, we're going to leave it at that. So, nice. Uh, Anybody, uh, we can't spoil anything. Yeah. Sorry. Anybody you'd love to doesn't you both have just the time opens up from both places uh and i mean anywhere like quebec ontario anywhere in canada u.s any dream projects dream for collabs? projects yeah well i think we go local yeah i think it's uh our first love for craft beer was the yakima from okay. castle and uh, we know dan very well uh, we consider him a friend and yeah we still love to do a collab with him it's just never I was lucky enough to get in that small window where they did have a tasting room. Okay. So it's like I go one time and like, oh, it's always open. So I let some friends know. I'm like, cool, yeah, check out Le Castor. I have a friend who lives in El Perot. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, check out Le Castor. And he's like, yo, it's closed. What do you mean it's closed? Yeah, it's closed. And yeah. then I, my brother-in-law comes in from Ontario. And I'm like, yeah, stop at this place and Rico. Cool. It's closed. What's going on? Go online. You close it. No. Yeah. But it's. Yeah. It's a big pain, and there's a lot of laws in Quebec that you have to yep. follow, obviously, especially with cleansiness. When, yeah, so. when you have, like, uh, in the brewery, yeah. a tasting room, it's, it's more complicated. Because right now we are doing, uh, like, some kind of a partnership with uh, the restaurant rooms. Uh, so there's one side is the tap room, mm-hmm. and the other side is the restaurant. And, like, you can taste another lineup of beers. Uh, it's, it's, it's great for both of us. So... This is easier to manage than having in the brewery. Yes. We used to run like all the tap room at the other place. So, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work and a lot of drinking (laughs) every day, you know. Uh, That's one of the brewers I was talking to. He's like pretty much a collab is just us getting together, drinking a lot of beer and then throwing stuff in a pot. <laughs> yeah. At some point it gets there. Yeah. <laughs> After the critical points, especially exactly. here, because uh, there, there is it's uh, it's quite manual. So Fred's got to yes keep one one eye open, right? <laughs> At least one eye. Yeah. yeah. And it's a bit of a workout, so you need to be a bit uh, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we do have more time with our families, also yes. without the tap room anymore, which is uh, which is nice. Yeah. Adulting while being adults is hard. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, so you mentioned you've done Germany and England and stuff, but yep. any uh, beer vac- once it's safe to travel again, I got to put that caveat in. Obviously, yep. uh, any beer vacations you haven't been on that are places you need to go to. Uh, just uh, well, a fun thing. Um, we we didn't even like we started the brewery, and we didn't get had the chance to just go visit all the breweries in Quebec. Okay, yeah. So that was a trip that we were planning to do, like, uh, like do every... All every, the way up to the Gaspésie. See all the guys, yeah. like, in Quebec, just, you know, because it's, it's, first it's fun, and then to meet, like, other people, how they're doing it, like, I, I, I think we, we could do that, like, yeah. we have been, like, thinking about that for a long time, but uh, 
well, it was more like business wise that yeah. we needed to go mm-hmm. like uh, across the sea and stuff. But uh, yeah, I think I would do all the Quebec breweries. Yeah, Quebec and Ontario are deceptively large provinces. Yes. So there's breweries, I'm sure, everywhere. I've never been out to the Gaspé Sea myself. So it's like, oh, it'd be great to go out there and try all the beers, but also the ocean's there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's things to do. And um, right now, support local, right? So Quebec, Ontario, these are the my two closest provinces. That's where I'm going to support. So. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, a lot of good stuff like just in Quebec. So yeah. No, there's a, a lot of fantastic. I mean, I haven't even hit all the breweries in Montreal yet, let alone Quebec. Well, I think so, you're over 200 now? Uh, I've hit. So in Quebec, Ontario, uh, New York State, New Jersey, I've hit 130, no, 142 breweries. Okay. Uh, since I started my craft beer journey, which was about 12 years ago. Okay. So I travel, I travel for beer. Yeah. Um, you know, this past Thanksgiving, uh, before the world shut down, uh, my father, my 75 year old father had never seen an NFL game. Uh, so I, now I have the financial backing to actually do something like that. So, okay, we're going out to Jersey yep. and we're going to watch football, but we're going to spend a weekend there. Okay. So Hold I haven't on. hit giants or jets. Uh, I'm a Packers fan. Okay. So I went to see the Packers versus the giants. Okay. okay. Who won? Uh, the Packers did 31, 20 something. It was, it was closer than I would have preferred, I, but we, is, we were robbed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll always give respect to the Giants for uh, defeating Tom Brady and the New England Patriots twice. So thank you. Uh, they'll always be my respect for yep. Eli for there. Yeah. Even though it was the defense that won it, but it was. Hey, <laughs> you can't spell elite without Eli. That's true. That is true. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, so I hit Brick City, Hackensack, a couple of breweries in that area, and then me and my father went into New York City for the day, and I hit Brooklyn and Queens, and I'm just like. I could spend a week here and not even come close to, to hitting most of the breweries. So, uh, but it was great. Made a lot of contacts as well. Hit had some fantastic beers. I'm talking, you know, a warehouse like yours, but they also have a tasting room on the floor. Yeah. Because in Quebec, there's the rule where you got to kind of keep everything separate from the yep. clientele. That doesn't exist anywhere else, pretty much. So. We know. Yeah. It's uh, it's one of those roadblocks in Quebec that I always think needs to be changed, but that's in time. So, I would like us to be able to ship beer directly to a client. That would be the first thing I would change. Uh, that was uh, during the beginning of COVID, Ontario. Uh, if you lived in Ottawa, sure, I'll drive you your beer in, in yep. an hour or two. So that, technically still illegal, but it's a gray area. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird alcohol laws that exist from prohibition times yeah. that yep. have to change. We need either a prime minister or, or a minister in charge of food and drug and stuff to uh, be into craft beer. So. Well, it's legal federally. It's provincial. Yeah. It's uh, prime minister's already good to go federally. Yeah. Everyone can ship beer directly to people, but it's uh, yeah, it's the provincial laws that are. Yeah, controlling. that's uh, something that desperately needs to change in our province. Yep. Because if I could order a six pack from down the street and just sit at home and then put it on my front porch, perfect. Yeah, so. I think we all want that. <laughs> yeah, and it's, yeah, you know, everybody wins. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so. I mean, even because you guys are more commercial. Then you were uh, like clientele mm-hmm. f- forward facing. Now I'm assuming you just can ha- open your door and serve people beer right now. Absolutely. Okay. So we're uh, we're trying to push once a month, kind of a new beer launch, like I was okay. saying. So we just want to bring people here once a month and safe, safe, yes, social distance event. Um, but yeah, we had we do visits and yeah, we had a really good time and uh, small groups, mass everything. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing with the brewery I live near. It's, you know, they put big giant X's, spray paints it on the ground, and you stand here, and then you go get your beer, and you order everything online. Mm-hmm. And, and it's great because you guys get to survive, and that's the most important part yep. right now is yep. the more you guys survive, the more you guys open, the better it is for the customer, mm-hmm. and the better it is to me for Canadians in general is that we get to support local. So Yep. Awesome. Uh, what's the last beer I'm going to be trying here? This is the Double Red Alert. It is a double red. And go, it fi- is, go figure. It won a medal. Yes, it did want, win a medal at the uh, 2020 London Beer Competition. Uh, silver medal. So we're uh, fairly proud of that. Uh, we're waiting to do the big announcement because our website isn't uh, quite ready to uh, handle traffic. 
and uh, we're just trying to take advantage of the marketing. So what's the point of marketing if people don't know where to get the beer? Yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, we had a quite a uh, well-known person in the beer uh, industry help us, Deborah Wood. She's a world-renowned beer judge and beer genius, is what we like to refer Cicerone, to as. Cicerone, um, BJC. Uh, way above all oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's, she existed way before all that stuff happened. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, she's like an x-ray machine as far as uh, beer tasting goes. Yes. That's fantastic. So she helped us with a grain bill and actually gave us one of the best comments we ever had was, I can't teach you guys anything about hops, so you guys go take care of that yourselves. Uh, and this is uh, what came out of it. There's six different uh, malts in here. Uh, super complex. It's malty with a kind of nice little hoppy finish to it. Quite on style. It was uh, it was brewed to to win medals. Nice, awesome. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's very nice. So double eight eight percent. Seven seven point seven. Yeah, that's there's some variance mm. there. You're, you're allowed, but barely any booziness. We're quite proud of this. Wow. It's, uh, it's dancing on the palate. It's fantastic. That's how we feel about it, and it's way too easy to drink. Yeah, uh, that's that could be problematic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll leave with some of that. Don't worry. Yeah, that's wow. That's a really good beer. Yeah, I get a little, just a slight hint of smokiness. So. Yep. Well, there are some uh, some roasted malts Mostly. in there. Yep. Um, wow, seven point seven percent. That's that's dangerous beer. Yeah, we can attest to that. Yeah. That's another good, like, for me, for my, for, for my palate, that's another good fall beer. Oh. That's, um, well, start, absolutely. start with something lighter, like the California Common, maybe yep. grab, uh, that'll be a question right after, but maybe grab a friend's brewer's Eng- best bitter or English bitter, and then, yeah, in the night with that. With a nice cigar, too, just saying it goes yeah. quite well. Uh. That's, a, that's a fantastic beer. Uh, so I know you guys are obviously not open to the public, but uh, somebody goes to the grocery store, Tries all your beers. Uh, you obviously would mention Lepitath as well. But any other friends breweries you'd suggest that they try their beers from? There's a good list. <laughs> <laughs> um, who well, are- well, there's a there's a new one that just opened. Uh, it's called uh, Bar- Barabas. Yes, Barabas. Okay. In, uh, where is that? <laughs> it's around here. It's South Shore, but uh, I don't remember Saint Barb. I think is it Saint Barb? Let's, Bar- go, let's go with that. Okay. Bar- Barabas. Yeah, okay. Well, Phil. that's the real name. Saint Bob. Okay, you know. Yeah. Phil's got this. Eh? Like, <laughs> didn't he, didn't Thank he, you, By Phil. the way, officially, he did not look at his phone. He just, that was all intelligence. <laughs> yeah, the guys from uh, Noir et Blanche, we... Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, we interviewed Matthew. Okay. So, yeah, early on. Uh, I think he's one of our first 13 episodes. So, okay. okay. Yeah. We were, unfortunately, we weren't there to enjoy the terrasse at Noir et Blanche, but it is a it's beautiful a, it's tavern. It's amazing, so, yeah. yeah. Um, but, There's yeah. a nice uh, brewery in a, some, like in a barn uh, near, uh, it's in Franklin. It's called uh, Livingstone Livingstone, brewery. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully future interview, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we, uh, myself and Phil, we did a quick beer trip. We did there and uh, Barabbas. Okay. That's what we Bar- just Bar- talked about. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Barabbas. Okay. Because I'm, I'm thinking English. I'm right? so sorry, I say Barabbas. <laughs> Phil, Phil, make sure to look me really, make me look really good in post, okay? Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Uh, they had um, a coconut New England that was just, whoa, this is crazy. So, so he's, our, he's our buddy. He used to be at um, well, ben, ben Benedict. Benedict. Yeah, Benedict. Okay. Benedict. Which, uh, Sherbrooke or Verdun? Uh, he used well, to be the owner of yeah. uh, okay. Of, both. Of both. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, because we interviewed Tico at uh, Benelux. Uh, yeah, it's cool. We, we love Tico. Tico. Yes. Yeah, Tico's a great guy. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know. We, we kind of like everyone. There's not really anyone we haven't met that we didn't like. I mean, we know the guys of Catarigen. Mm-hmm. Like, they're good buddies of ours. Drew. Yep. Uh, River um, Band. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we had good Café Noir. Noir. Café okay. Noir. Yeah. We went there uh, last year. It was their 10th uh, anniversary. Uh, had a good time. Yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> yeah. We, did have a, we did have a good time. We generally do. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So pretty much uh, stick to Quebec and uh, yeah. um, well, uh, enjoy beers. Maybe some friends in Ontario who aren't that far from you guys when you think about oh, it. Oh, ra- so. Razzlebuck also. <laughs> That's how I say it. Razzlebuck. Razzlebuck. 
Oh, Ras Rasbuck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Rasbuck. <laughs> yeah. So I like, like that they guys. have two uh, two beers named after pro wrestlers. So. Yes. Uh, Vruden <laughs> makes great beer too. Uh, um, La Souche. Uh, oh, we can. Okay, we can like throw some. Uh, so Nebraska. Okay. Cross strain in Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah, we had a good time there. We came showed out of nowhere. We happened to be shopping over there, and they took such amazing care of us. <laughs> Uh, Bobby was amazing. We uh, had a dance party in the brewery like <laughs> section while people were watching us. Like, there is the like a room. window. Like, yeah, there's a window the watching <laughs> us. And we're in the brewery. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was just the most random, awesome thing. Um, came out of nowhere. So uh, it's kind of associate those those kinds of things with moments, and that's kind of what. And the guys from what we remember, uh, right? yeah, Boiler. We went to Boiler Brewery uh, just before that. Yeah. Was that the name? Yeah. Border? I don't know. Borderline, Borderland. Uh, boil. Border. Like a, oh. a, a, yeah, yeah. a steam okay, boiler. Boiler. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> the more I drink, the more I speak <laughs> English. You know, it's, 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 that's, that's I'm, my, getting I'm getting there. I'm getting I find there. that's my French too. <laughs> so, <laughs> are we getting a refill? What's yeah. happening here? The drunker I get, the better my French becomes. <laughs> uh, I mean, I got not much else left. Uh, but uh, so what's next for the Bois Blanc brand? Uh, take over the world. <laughs> that's uh that's one thing i, I love I, to play risk you know yeah. so one thing i constantly try and promote is we should have interprovincial uh beers obviously so. yeah by the way ukraine is weak but don't talk to them, no. <laughs> <laughs> um myself Sorry, and my ukraine. friends when we would play risk would be uh madagascar is the key okay so that would be our thing so. okay yeah. awesome yeah. so taking over the world uh you mentioned you already got a beer coming out in a month so yeah we're uh, gonna be on the it. lookout for that at uh if you're in Verdun, Malte Hops, if you're around IGAs or any specialty beer shops. So. You got it. Awesome. Uh, let the people know where they can find you on social media, all that stuff. Um, so we have Facebook. It's all Brasserie du Bois Blanc. It's not very complicated. Facebook, Instagram, no Twitter, no Pinterest yet. Um, but yeah, we're, uh, we have about 600, 700 points of sale in uh, Quebec, IGAs, Metro, specialized stores. Um, and yeah, a lot of new stuff is going to be coming. Uh, in time for Halloween, we've got Kraken, Dark Soul, and Tempête Divine fresh back on the shelves. Uh, so I think there will be at least five people, I would say, that are going to be happy about that. <laughs> Maybe more. We'll go at a, at a floor a floor of at least five. So uh, apart from us four, there's got to be at least one other person. For sure. <laughs> um, sure there is. So yeah, that's exciting. That's all coming back. And um, yeah, new stuff is coming too every month from Webla. And uh, we'll be opening our doors up here to, to host some people once a month. So please come on down, help us out. I think it helps everyone again. The yep. whole support local yep. thing. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so as it is, uh, hashtag support local. I know it's uh, cheesy to say hashtag this, hashtag that. But we should support local and uh, drink all the craft beer there is. Uh, as for us, allbeerinside.com is the website. Add allbeerinside on all the social media. And as I say at the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap. Ha, ha, ha.